Shalom. Sorry, I'm late. I was actually going out of town. Then I realized, oh, it's synagogue. I got to sorry. <laughs> Turn back and forgive me. Oh, let's see. I uh, woke up this morning. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> Say hallelujah. <laughs> With all I got going on, it's a, it's a big deal. A <laughs> good way to start. And uh, I heard the Lord say 103, which is tremendous to me for so many reasons, because of the Torah Pasha. And uh, not, not that it surprised me, but I was just thankful. You know, when you read the Psalms for, for years and years and years, you just know. You just know Psalm 7 and Psalm 12 and Psalm 15 and Psalm 150 and Psalm 139. And you just know. You just know what they're basically about. Um, you know how I always say, guys, how, um, you know, when we, when we read the Bible, it speaks to us. But when we read the Psalms, they speak for us. There's very, there's very little like the Psalms in the scriptures because they're very raw and very real and very genuine. And, and one of the reasons why I love the Psalms, I'm sure the same reason why you love the Psalms so much, is that sometimes they verbalize so incredibly beautifully what we often feel but cannot find words to express. And, and Psalm 103, I think, is the quintessential psalm to verbalize so beautifully what we often feel but cannot express. So um, I'm going to read it. There's 22 verses. Um, I might share a little something here and there. But at the very end, it ends with a rolling anthem, so, uh, verses 20 to 22. It's a rolling anthem of praise, and there's a great crescendo that builds, and uh, David ends uh, the psalm beautifully. So um, if you wouldn't mind, maybe by the time we get to that point, you could be infused enough with the Holy Spirit to partake in that crescendo with David. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, badger the witness. I don't want to make you do anything you're uncomfortable with because that's not my style. But when I read this, hopefully, as each word of God gets in you and it's energized, hopefully, by the Holy Spirit, you'll have no choice but to join in the crescendo. Sound okay? All right, he starts out by saying, bless out and anoint my soul. And, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. You want to jump in on the crescendo early? Be my guest. Um, it's not, you know, we're tripartite, right? We have a spirit, soul, and body. He's not just talking about the soul here. He's not just talking about your decision maker. He's talking about all of him. He's saying all of me, okay, in this sense. But sometimes soul and spirit are used interchangeably depending on where it is in the scripture. So he says, bless out and my soul. Now there's an exclamation point, and the reason for that is he's commanding. His spirit that is connected to God's spirit is commanding his decision maker to get his mouth to move. You follow? If you're waiting on it, if you're waiting on it, it, it won't happen. You'll miss it. So hopefully last night and this morning, you've been conditioning your soul to praise the Lord. I'm going to try to help you out, okay? Bless out and my soul. He says, everything in me. Bless his holy name. That's why he's holy. He's not your buddy. He's not the big man upstairs. He's not your pal that you take to the mall. He is almighty God, El Shaddai. God Almighty. You follow? And that is something that is drastically missing today in churches, especially in America. Everything in me, bless. Bless means not to protect him. Baruch is different. Baruch to us, God protects us and he prospers us and he gives us peace. We're not going to prosper God. We're not going to protect God. We're not going to give God peace. Okay, so what does it mean then? It's a different word. It means get on your knees and salute him. Bless his holy name. And then he says again, bless out annoy my soul and forget none of his benefits. A second call to worship to recognize him as Alvenu Machenu, our father and our king. Forget none of his benefits. We take way too much for granted. Anybody that has children between the age of maybe 5 and 25, they just take too much for granted. They're not evil. They're not mean. They're not malicious. But you have to not take things for granted. Because if you think things are coming to you, then your kids are going to think they're coming to them. Train them. Nothing's coming to us. God doesn't owe us anything, but he gives us everything. We owe him everything and give him... He forgives all our offenses. Is that enough? Is that enough for you to celebrate today? 
This says every single offense from last Shabbat to right now, he forgives. You might not believe it, but I'm going to believe the word of God over what you believe. So if you do believe it, you would go crazy. But because you don't go crazy, that's because you don't believe it. So we'll try it again. He forgives all your offenses. He heals all your diseases. Now there's, there's denominations that believe he heals everything. It's ridiculous. They went off. They went off in understanding this verse. How could that be when it says later in the psalm, he understands how we are made, we are but dust, yet the human days are like grass. Everybody dies. Ultimately, you get a healing, but ultimately, you die from some kind of sickness, right? Old age, but you die. Old age is a sickness. You die. So it doesn't mean that. What it means is that the believer can't expect healing every, from every disease. But whenever a believer is healed, it's the mercy of God. For from God, they should be acknowledged as he is the healer. That's what it's saying. That every disease he does heal, it's him, the healer. He might work through a miracle. He might work through a doctor. But docs, I love you, but you're just a tool. And anybody who builds a house, nobody ru runs up to the toolbox and grabs a screwdriver and go, wow, what a job you did. You follow what I'm saying? It's okay. You're blessed. You went to school for a long time. You sacrificed. I get it. I understand it. And I wholeheartedly respect it. But you are the hammer or the screwdriver. God is the healer. He redeems your life from the pit, obviously, from hellfire. But he redeems you. Until we get to heaven, you and I will not know how many dangers and accidents and tragedies he's delivered us from. He surrounds you with grace and compassion. What's better than that? You're surrounded by grace and compassion. He contents you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Look, the body may get sick, but nothing can touch the spirit. That's why we say all is well with our soul. An eagle's reputation is long life, superior strength, but the man in the Lord, he experiences revival over and over and over and over. Some of you are going to experience it today, trust me. I don't know, he brings vindication and justice to all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moshe, his mighty deeds to the people of Israel. His ways were known through revelation, his acts through observation. They saw it. You see it. I see it. I don't know, he is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in grace. Let me read that again. Adonai is merciful. That means tender, loving, and kind. Compassionate. He's incredibly caring. Slow to anger. He's a lot slower to anger than you are, and I thank God that you're not God. Slow to anger. And he's rich, abundant in grace. He will not always accuse. He will not keep his anger forever. A lot of us do. We stay angry at people. We stop talking to them. We say, you don't understand what happened. I just don't want to have anything to do with them. Thank you, God, that you're not like that. He has not treated us as our sins deserve. Guys, I don't know if you get that. <laughs> Old puritanical statement from the 1600s. Your trials will never exceed your transgressions. You heard what I said? Your trials, no matter what you go through, will never exceed your sins. No way, no how. He has not paid us back for our offenses because his mercy towards those who fear him. There is a condition. He doesn't throw out his mercy towards anybody. He throws his mercy towards those who respect him. Not who get it right all the time, but who have an incredible respect for who he is, his office. Not for what he does, just who he is. And for those of you who fear him that way, your sins are removed as far as the east is from the west, which is a place that no scientist knows. We don't know where they are. <laughs> Not even Satan knows where they are. So he can't even bring them back to you. Just as a father has compassion on his children, I don't know his compassion on those who fear him. Listen to me. Man's weakness appeals to God's compassion. If you're strong and you got to figure out, you repel him. You got to figure it out. 
right? I was a psycho tension martial artist when I was young. Crazy, crazy. And Bruce Lee was a hero of mine. But Bruce Lee said something that I recalled after I got saved. When people would come to see him, Steve McQueen, and all these rich actors would want him to train them. And they would pay whatever he wanted, thousands and thousands of dollars a session. They would always come and sit with him and tell him about their accolades. Well, I studied with this one, I studied with that one, I studied with this one. And he'd just dismiss them. And they say, why? He said, your cup is full. I can't fill your cup. Unless you empty your cup, I can't fill it. You follow? So if you got to figure it out, you got it. You don't need God. Paul boasted about his weakness, buddy. It wasn't an air of false humility. He got it. He knew he was weak, incredibly weak, and he boasted. We talk about him. If he was here and I was talking about him well, he'd go, stop. Stop. I'm the chief of sinners. Don't talk about me that way. Woo. For he understands how we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Dust. Yes, a human being's days are like grass. He sprouts up like a flower in the countryside, but when the wind sweeps over, it's gone. That means what's 70, 80 years? People are holding on to their life. They're putting on this cream and that cream and taking this and that. Am I about taking care of yourself? Absolutely. But you're going to die. And it goes by like this. It's a blip. When the wind sweeps over, it's gone, and its place, it knows no more. But, isn't that a good but? If we ended there, that's depressing. God doesn't depress us. He goes, but the mercy of Adonai on those who fear him is from eternity past to eternity future. I mean, our days are not numbered. Don't you get it? And his righteousness extends to his children's children. Some of you are worried. You've raised your children the way they should go. And they're not there. They don't get it yet. They'll get it. They'll get it. Because the word of God does not go out and return void. His promises have a condition. Listen to what it says. His mercy on those who fear him is from eternity. It's always there. It always will be there. On his children's children, provided they keep his covenant and remember to follow his precepts. Not my word. I would have loved to have just said, yep, you got it. God loves you, you got it. Provided. Provided. <laughs> There's an attachment. Listen to me. The greatest evangelist we ever had besides Paul was J. Hudson Taylor in the China Inland Mission. 32,000 people. Nobody's ever pulled that off. J. Hudson Taylor said, the entry fee to the kingdom of heaven is free. The annual dues will cost you your life. That's what I explained last week. Who's there that contemns you? No one. Now go and follow me and do everything I say. That's the part that's missing, guys. And the old theologians knew it all too well. Why? Because it's all over here, and they were all over here. And today we're not all over here. We come in, hear a verse, hear some guy talk 35 minutes about how you can use that verse for your benefit, and then you go have lunch. Adonai has established his throne in heaven his kingly power rules everything. He's sovereign. Now here's the crescendo. You ready? I hope we don't waste our time. You're infused a little bit? You get it? If you have to go away for July 4th weekend, you can actually leave now because you've got a sermon. Bless Adonai. He calls the angels to bless the Lord. The heavenly host. The myriads and myriads, the millions upon millions. He's calling them. He's saying, you are a created being. Worship God. He says, bless Adonai, you angels of his. You mighty warriors who obey his word. You mighty warriors who obey his word. Who carry out his orders. Do you think there's an angel in heaven that says no to God? He's saying, you have a right. Then he says, bless Adonai, all his troops. Are you born again? Hello? <laughs> Who serve him and, and do what he wants. You follow? We're supposed to do what he wants. He's not here to do our bidding. He gives us plenty of times of refreshing. He gives me tons of time of refreshing. But when he wants me to do something, I do it. Bless Adonai all his works. He calls on all creation. 
in every place where he rules. And then after David receives this whole thing from divine utterance and revelation, he ends by just saying, bless that anoint my soul. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We are going to have some fun today, and I'm wholeheartedly hopeful that the Lord will show, and I'm also hopeful that we will leave changed. This is not something we do to check off, yes, went to synagogue, honored Shabbat, nope, I'm here to get changed. So that's our prayer. Father God, in Yeshua's name, we ask that you come. If you come, we change. If you come, we change. It's just that simple. So we want to change, so come. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.